It's almost 100 years since the Chinese Communist Party was established. But as the trappings of capitalism grows ever more ubiquitous in the country, do the millennials of China still identify as communists? If so, which aspects? Shanghai-based beautician Kiki Zhou grew up in a village near the border with Kyrgyzstan, in China's northwestern Xinjiang province. That's where her parents met as teenagers in the 1960s. Her father came from Shanghai while her mother was from Chongqing, and they were among 17 million youths sent to live and work in rural areas as part of the Chinese Communist Party's Up to the Mountains and Down to the Countryside movement. Mao Zedong, the man who led China's Communist Revolution in 1949, had declared that it is very necessary for the educated youth to go to the countryside and undergo re-education by the poor peasants. 当时就觉得他们能够那么小的年纪就是说背井离乡啊真的去一些很偏远的地方等于说也算是白手起家吧全都要自己干活嘛没有父母照顾他们能够自己好好的生活把我们养大也的确是不容易就跟着父母长大的
young generation, they mostly look into the achievement that China had gained over the past two or three decades. The image about China would be much positive than the generation, for example, like people now in 40s or 50s. They would think China always on the right track. It's a successful in terms of many things, for example, like economic growth and anti-poverty. The impact of 100 years of communist rule is that the lines between party and state are blurred or even non-existent in China. To the extent that displays of patriotic or nationalistic pride have been equated with support for the party. This means that any protest or dissent, even for non-political reasons, may be interpreted as a threat against the party and by extension the government. So while young people have emerged as trailblazers in many parts of the world, this phenomenon is largely absent in China. But there are some, like Jenny Chao, who are still trying to do what they can. She co-founded a not-for-profit organisation in 2019 alongside friends who were all the first in their families to go to university. Their goal is to help impoverish first-generation university students navigate a society where social mobility seems to be declining. So,现在选大学的时候,填报志愿的时候,我们就意识到了爸爸妈妈没有上过大学的话,他其实很难给到你一些建议。the 32-year-old has spent eight years working in France before returning to China, and she now works as a marketer. But even though she's been a Communist Party member since she was in high school, she's declined to share her thoughts on communism, perhaps mindful of the sensitivities. But while China is certainly no bastion of free speech, there's no doubt that among the few states in the world that still claim to be communist, the country is easily the most economically successful. This success has bolstered Chinese national pride and patriotism, and in turn contributes to boosting the legitimacy of the Communist Party to rule. China in the 1980s, they even debate about the separation of party and the government. But now they, they, they cannot actually talk about the issue. The issue, even they cannot talk about some issue related to uh, constitutional reform and also some some components of democracy. So in the past they, they, they can do that, but now you can see they have more and more uh, ideology uh, emphasizing the traditional uh, Communist Party's ideology. Today, long-time party members have been punished by the party for speaking out about the dangers of returning to an ideologically driven system. Those arguments may have their merits. But for millennials like Chen Xi and Jenny, who have only seen China's dazzling growth over the years, such concerns are probably far removed from their daily lives. As they're the generation who's benefited the most from what China watchers call the grand bargain, where the party delivers prosperity in exchange for political apathy. The only catch is the party will have to keep up its side of the bargain. Ninety years since it was established, Vietnam's Communist Party is seemingly stronger than ever. With a secretive, twice-a-decade meeting, the National Party Congress due to take place later this month. It's the party's most important event to choose new leadership and to set economic goals. But on the streets of Hanoi, the 13th National Congress is not foremost on the minds of Vietnamese particularly the millennials. Though the country had changed much over the course of their lives under communist rule, Vietnam has also become increasingly plugged into the global economy. And a 2014 poll from the Pew Research Center showed that 95% of Vietnamese support capitalism, though politics remain a sensitive topic in Vietnam today. 
Em thấy thì mọi người thì cũng không phải là ít khi nói chuyện về chính trị giới trẻ rất là ít khi chủ nghĩa cộng sản thì em cái này em cũng không tìm hiểu nhiều ấy mà em nghĩ là chắc là chính sách của nhà nước đưa ra thì ok không 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 nói chuyện nữa. Vietnam has stepped up its imprisonment of political activists in recent years and the number of political prisoners has reached its highest on record last year, according to Amnesty International. Despite that, there are still some Vietnamese millennials who are demanding greater civic and political freedom from the authorities, even though it comes with personal risks. Cao Vĩnh Thịnh is one of them. The 33-year-old social entrepreneur owns and operates several shops selling eco-friendly products with no plastic waste. And she's been promoting public awareness on environmental issues, a seemingly innocuous endeavor. Thì bắt đầu từ cái mốc là từ 2015. Từ bắt đầu từ khi mà em tham gia việc bảo vệ cây xanh và vì hồi đấy ngây thơ lắm, nghĩ, nghĩ rằng là những cái quyền ví dụ lên tiếng bảo vệ một cái những cái thứ hiển nhiên đang xảy ra trước mắt mình ấy là, là điều phải được khuyến khích vì là theo những cái phương khẩu hiệu rồi những cái phương châm của đảng nhà nước cũng như là của bác hồ chủ tịch. But the move wasn't welcomed by the authorities, even though Thịnh had the right credentials, graduating from the Communist Party's propaganda academy. Thế là cứ cuối tuần là chủ nhật là dắt xe ra khỏi nhà và hôm đấy là em với con gái em cuối tuần nào cũng đi cùng nhau nên là dắt xe ra thì đã đã một nhóm bên ngoài chờ sẵn rồi đủ hết cả công an rồi phụ nữ cái gì chi hội phụ nữ của phường rồi chi hội mặt trận tổ quốc rồi cờ an ninh họ đứng xung quanh khu nhà em họ không cho em ra khỏi nhà. But it didn't shake her resolve. And Thịnh continue her volunteer work in environmental campaigns, even as she claims to have faced more threats and harassment from the authorities. Em nghĩ về Đảng Cộng sản nói chung nhé, rất là lớn mạnh, hệ thống rất vững chắc và họ rất là cái tính linh hoạt của họ rất cao. Nên thế nhưng mà đáng nhẽ cái 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 việc mà Họ đã có những cái bộ rễ rất là sâu chắc và mạnh mẽ như thế rồi Mà bây giờ họ chỉ cần cởi mở ra hơn Họ họ quay lại về với việc là à, bán đi Không cần hoàn toàn 100% rằng là thay đổi một cái thể chế gì khác Hoặc là họ có thể là chấp nhận Rất là khó để nghĩ rằng là nếu mà Đảng Cộng sản chấp nhận cho đa đảng Tức là sau một cái đảng cạnh tranh với Đảng Cộng sản Điều đấy thì em nghĩ là khó with little breathing space for those critical of the authorities. It's unlikely that there'll be greater political pluralism in Vietnam in the foreseeable future, especially with politics still far from the minds of those who are still struggling. Chỉ mong sao là công việc thuận lợi cho gia đình ổn định thôi. Chứ còn về toán dự tính là sau này này chị cũng mong là sau này công việc nó làm công ty ấy, nó tốt hơn hai vợ chồng đi làm ấy, thì sẽ có nhà cửa nó đàng hoàng với lại con cái nó học ăn học đầy đủ thế thôi. It's a sentiment shared by many Vietnamese millennials. Members of this family had ditched their rice fields to work in a factory manufacturing apples airports. And they now live in this workers dormitory in Mỹ Điền, 2 hour drive from Vietnam's capital Hanoi. To them it doesn't matter whether Vietnam's communist or capitalist. What matters is that they have jobs which pay well. Điều chăn trở của chính trị thì nói chung thì cũng nhiều 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 cái vấn đề. Bọn em thì quan tâm thì chỉ qua uh, điện thoại di động thôi Chứ bây giờ ở đây thì cũng không TV hay là không không có thời gian để ra ngoài tìm hiểu nhiều ấy. Under the leadership of its communist government Vietnam is one of the very few countries that have dealt with the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic relatively well 
and experts expect the country to be one of the few bright spots in the global economy this year. Though there are no polls to gauge public support for the government's COVID-19 measures, anecdotal evidence suggests the government's moves were popular. And as the country continues to try keeping the virus at bay, and particularly ahead of the National Party Congress, calls for greater political participation are likely to be muted. But Cao Vĩnh Thịnh still hopes that the government will allow more young people to participate in their decision-making process, even as she admitted that it's not a desire shared by many of her young compatriots. Đấy là điều hoàn toàn bọn em luôn luôn cảm nhận được điều đấy. Bởi vì thứ nhất là truyền thông cũng của nhà nước, rồi mạng xã hội ABC cũng của nhà nước, rồi bây giờ luật cũng do nhà nước, rồi quyền lực cũng ở trong tay nhà nước. Tất cả mọi thứ người dân là bình thường với những quốc gia hạnh phúc đi mang chỉ số hạnh phúc là người dân có quyền lực nhất. Nhưng mà Việt Nam thì chính quyền và đảng là những nơi mà chứa cái quyền lực lớn nhất rồi. But still, she hopes her efforts to push for greater political pluralism will bear fruit someday. Russia, the country most famous for spreading communism around the world. In 1917, communists staged a revolution and created the Soviet Union, bringing the ideology to much of Europe and Asia. More than a century later, and Russia is an open capitalist country governed for two decades by President Vladimir Putin. But as I found out, the love and loathing of communism may yet shape its future. In Moscow, history has many faces. Soviets sitting with skyscrapers, Revolution and Rolex, Marx and McDonald's, Lamborghinis and Lenin. Russia's most famous communist must wonder, whatever happened? But the real question is, what happens next? The country is at a junction, and Russia must decide which parts of its past will shape the future. We meet the millennials who will live out that story from one who wants communism consigned to history. There are a lot of people who want these changes, who want to be moving forward, not backward. To another who wants it resurrected. It's decades since the Soviet Union began opening up to business and capital and 30 years since this McDonald's first opened its doors, causing kilometer-long queues. Many of Moscow's millennials can't remember what a world without companies and consumerism was like, and yet there are some wishing it would return. More than a century since the Bolsheviks seized power, there are young Russians hoping to ascend those revolutionary steps again. He's one of many young urban professionals armed with suit and smartphone who sympathize with the Soviet Union. A poll done in 2017 found that more than a third of millennials, more than any other generation, believe that the Soviet Union continuously improved people's lives. He dreams of a Russia without money, property or corrupt capitalist excess because he believes it will allow resources to be shared fairly by all. Предметом гордости не считаю обладание какой-то вещью. На мой взгляд, знания, опыт, общение, какие-то культурологические особенности, они наиболее важны для человека и для личности, чем какие-то публикушки. Mr. Krylov lost hope in Putinism and became a communist convert after witnessing an election official illegally stuffing votes into a box. 
But in modern Russia, the Soviet Union is little more than a relic, present only in old statues and nostalgia cafes. How then could it ever come back? We live in a capitalist world, so isn't your dream impossible? Противоречия усиливаются, когда вертикаль власти берет все железным кулаком, не дает продуху, и при этом не на что жизнь. На мой взгляд, абсолютно объективные изменения, которые должны привести либо к реформам, к левым реформам, либо, ну извините, к революции. Communist Party support stands at around 10% nationally, so there's little chance of a revolution, and some millennials are heading the other way entirely. <laughs> 32-year-old Daria Besiedinia is the eco-liberal riding out a surprising turn. In summer 2019, Moscow span with protests. After opposition candidates were barred from local elections. Ms. Besiedinia was one of the voices of change. An architect by trade, she has spent her life trying to make Moscow greener and cleaner. I want to live in a country that is there for the people, that includes everybody and cares for the world. And with just a bike and some bold ideas, she surprised everyone and got elected in 2019. One of a record 20 opposition-minded candidates who took nearly half of all seats, and that in a country where independent voices are often kept far from power. It's important to, uh, to be myself, uh, to come into that uh, parliament session, uh, into that room, uh, in my pink sweater, and to be me. In her firing line, Russia's powerful elites. There is no understanding that people's lives are important, uh, that people's thoughts are important. They don't understand that. They don't have an understanding of that at all. Uh, people are just meat for them, and that's scary. Through YouTube and Facebook, she espouses a more accessible style of politics, arguing for a European Russia that embraces human rights and condemn Soviet crimes to the past. A child of communism's collapse, for her, Stalin abused power, and modern Russia is doing it all over again, including during the pandemic. She's petitioned against two bills introducing extra surveillance measures for tracking people during lockdown. The last century, I think, in Russian history has, has been one big mistake, actually, because and the Iron Curtain and this um, trying to guard off, and what Putin is right, doing right now, he's trying to cut us off from the Western world. And of course, there are plenty of millennials who still support Vladimir Putin. But one day, a time of change will come. Both Ms. Besiedina and Mr. Krylov have been shaped by Russia and want to reshape it in return. Their ideas may seem unlikely, given Mr. Putin's popularity. But from the Tsars to the revolution, to Putinism, Russia rarely conforms to expectations, and who knows which faces will make history next. Mm -hmm.